Hey, what's up? I want to give y'all this Bible scripture. Uh, this is Matthew chapter 18, and it's talking about the greatest in the kingdom. And let me go ahead and get to it, because everybody wants to know who's the greatest in the kingdom, right? That's a question that people would have, and this is Jesus' disciples that have this question. About that time, you know, so check it. Yeah, I'm back, but this is the scripture, Matthew chapter 18, verse, I mean, at just chapter 18, Matthew chapter 18. About that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, which of us is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a small child over to him and put the child among them. Then he said, I assure you, unless you turn from your sins and become as little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, anyone who becomes as humble as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf is welcoming me. But if anyone causes one of these little ones to, who trust in me to lose faith, it would be better for that person to be thrown into the sea with a large milestone tied around the neck. How terrible it will be for anyone who causes others to sin. Temptation to do wrong is inevitable, but how terrible it will be for the people who does these, this wrong, uh, does the tempting, the tempting. So if you hand, if your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It would be better to enter the kingdom of heaven crippled or lame than to be thrown into the unquenchable fire with both your hands and, f and feet. And if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better to enter heaven half blind than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell. Beware that you don't despise a single one of these little ones. For I tell you, that in heaven their angels are always in the presence of my heavenly father so instructions from jesus to not stir these little children the wrong way and what he's telling you the consequences of those actions if you do choose to stir these children in the wrong direction what will happen you'll be thrown into hell that's what he said because you'll be blind, you'll have everything you need. You okay? He's saying that whatever that you have, that is a part of you, but it's causing you to not to to not be with God. That you should cut it off. If it's a hand, this is figurative language. If it's a hand, cut it off. This hand right here make you steal every time. Cut it off. But he's not saying. He's saying, cut that urge off to steal. Then you won't have to cut your hand off, but cut the urge to steal, you know. If it's selling drugs, whatever it is, if it's smoking, whatever it is that's, that's causing you to sin, you're supposed to cut it off. Cut it off at the, at the scene. And so we all, have to, we all have to do it. We all have to try our best to do it, you know what I'm saying? But look, he said, he says, Jesus says, evil is wrong he said temptation to do wrong is inevitable you know what i'm saying but he's saying don't be the one that's doing the tempting you be positive you tell people the, the right things you tell people the gospel of jesus you don't steer them in the wrong way you don't because he says it's, it's, you, it'd be better it's, it's better for a man it says but if anyone causes one of these little ones who trust in me to lose faith it would be better for that person to be thrown into the sea with a large milestone tied around the neck. So he's telling you, you don't want to stir them the wrong way because you're going, your eternal damnation is what it's going to be. If you, talk, if you cause them your little kids, and really it's really his children, the guys, Jesus' his children, he caused his children to stir. No, it's not, son. It's not. It's not. You will if you stir if you let them stir you uh, if you stir the little children wrong, then you will c pay the consequences. So that's what that's talking about. Then we have uh, in this chapter also the story of the lost sheep. 
And let me read that to you. If a shepherd has 100 sheep and one wanders away and is lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others and go out into the hills to search for the lost one? And if he finds it, he will surely rejoice over it more than over the 99 that didn't wander away. In the same way, it is not my heavenly Father's will that even one of these little ones should perish. So what he's saying is, <clears throat> what Jesus is saying is if you have 99 men or women that are righteous, and, but but, and you have one that is uh, that's a sinner, that's, that's unrighteous, that's not saved through God, through Jesus, uh, doesn't believe that Jesus died for his sins. But you have, so you have that one, but he's one of God's chosen. God is going to go out of his way to find a way, well, not just to find a way, he makes a way and he, to, to save you because you're his child. And he's saying that, okay, he rejoicing, he's rejoicing, he's ha already happy that the other 99 haven't left him. But that one that has left him, it's very con he's con very concerned about that, that sheep, that person that's chosen to be with him. And he's not going to lose. He, in that way, he doesn't want any of these little ones, any of his children, to perish. So he's going to go out of his way to show you that he's God and you will recognize. So that's showing you the love and care that you see how he, he, he if you're his, even the unright, the one is the unrighteous one, the one who didn't, who turned away from God, and he's still going to go find him. And when he does find him, and he come, and that sheep come home, that person comes home, God and the angels are going to rejoice. They're going to be happy that this one came back. They're already happy that the other ones didn't leave, but they, they're even extremely more happy because they, it was one that was almost lost. You ever thought of that, losing something? So so valuable, so valuable to you, and it comes back to you, safe. Your child at that. That's how he thinks about us. You see what I'm saying? And this is um, the subject of correcting a fellow believer. If another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the fault. If the other person listens and confesses it, you have won that person back. But if you are unsuccessful. Take one or two others with you and go back again, so that everything you say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. If that person still refuses to listen, take your case to the church. If the church decides you are right, but the other person won't accept it, treat that person as a pagan or a corrupt tax collector. If I tell you this, whatever you prohibit on earth is prohibited in heaven. And whatever you allow on earth is allowed in heaven. I also tell you this. If two, or you, two of you agree down here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three gather together because that they are mine, I am there among them. So for believers, listen to this. See what God has made out of Two or three get gathered together and ask something of the Lord Jesus, of God the Father and the Holy Spirit. He said that you're going to do it, right? No matter how it gets done and the step and the path that it takes, he said he's going to do it, right? See, when your prayers, your prayers shift the future. Your prayers are that strong with Jesus Christ. Your prayers shift the future. So start praying and shifting the future, changing the future. Don't look at prayer like it's a dead prayer, like God doesn't hear it. If you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God, the Father, hears your prayers. They go straight to him, through, through, through Jesus, straight to him. Trust me. And he hears you. Every, it don't, none, of, none of your prayers fall to the ground with no power in them. Trust me. If you believe in Jesus Christ truly and your, as your Lord and Savior. And this is the last subject of the chapter. The story of the unforgiving, unforgiving debtor. Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? <clears throat> no, Jesus replied, 70, 70 times seven. For this reason, 